Okay, it's Friday evening. We're looking at 80 degrees. There we go. We're looking at 80 degrees outside. So. So, since most of you have never seen this car clean, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to wash it. It, it has uh, a 3M wrap. It has the OptiCoat Pro. And so I'm going to use the foam cannon and the pressure washer. And I'm going to try the two bucket method. I don't know if all of my equipment is clean, seeing it's how it's the middle of winter. But if I have clean rags, we'll go ahead and do the two bu bucket method. Otherwise, we'll just soap it up and rinse it off. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, if you have a car with self-presenting doors, like this Model X here, is you want to disable the self-presenting door in the settings, or take your key and put it aside so that it doesn't see you walking around. All right, with that, I'm gonna throw the drone up, finish setting up the pressure washer, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so with the two bucket method, you're gonna have two buckets, preferably with grit guards, but I don't have any of those. So I'm just gonna be careful. Uh, you'll have one with your soap and one that's clean for rinsing. And the uh, next step is to rinse the car. So we're gonna do that and we'll get started. The box? Yeah, the water just beads right up and it comes right off just because of the ceramic coating. A little bit is the additives from the car wash, but not much.
Here you can see the UV coating on the windshield. That's why the half the windshield looks kind of orange. Okay, life hack. Because it's an electric blower and I've got the car wrapped in ceramic, we're going to use a little bit of air. Take our clean, dry microfiber cloth. Again, we want to start at the top and work our way down. Just keep the contamination and scratching and stuff to a minimum. Something like that. That wasn't perfect, but it was good, it was passable. And now this Model X is ready for our next road trip. And you know what happens when we road trip? You get supercharger reviews. You get noisy fossils. <laughs> you get trip trip reports, uh, drive summaries, more noisy fossils. If you smash that subscribe button, ring that bell and smash that like button, you get more content like this, but better. So with that, we'll catch you next time. See you on the flip side. We just finished washing the Model X P100D for the first time. Uh, you've obviously seen me take it through the car wash in some of the videos, but the touchless car wash isn't quite the same thing as being able to get some pressure right where you need it and get your sponges and, and, and scrubs where you want them and to use the good soap, not the cheap stuff. So what would we change for the next time? Uh, I would want to do more daylight. Uh, we lost quite a few minutes because all of the tools had been moved from where I put them. Uh, some of the guys and gals out there might understand when you've got a partner and they like to tidy things differently than you do. Stuff just moves. Anyway, so uh, something that will already be done next time is the tools will have already been opened. Uh, some of them were new for the next season. Uh, it was just an unseasonably warm winter day, so I took advantage of it. Uh, if it had been the spring day like I had planned, I would have already opened the box for the pressure washer, set out the, the foam cannon and everything. Uh, it's also, there was a little bit of a learning curve from my last pressure washer. Uh, that one was more vertical rather than that, uh, that luggable style that I have. And uh, it didn't tolerate the changes in water pressure that, that my house gives. So it would stall out for quite a long moment in the middle of every time it got an air bubble. Whereas as you saw with this one, it uh, it recovers pretty quickly. Um, the next thing I would do is I would change the height of the Model X. I would lower it to the lowest setting, very low. Uh, what you saw was low. My last two cars that I washed using the same method in the same driveway were a 2013 Chevrolet Volt and my 2016 Model S 90D. Both of those sit considerably lower, so I could reach right over the top with the Model X or with the Model S on the very high position, and not even have to to, to worry about stretching for it. With the Model X, it's, it's not the same thing. So I'm gonna lower it down. I might even have like a small step, so I can just easily do the top. I'm, I'm not a short guy, about 5'11", but on the hill and with it in, in regular low, I, I just couldn't reach the middle. So if anybody were to look at the drone photos, I haven't seen them yet they will probably show a nice dry spot in the middle where I didn't get it with, uh, with uh, soap or the, or the sponge. But thankfully I did, I did wet them with the, um, with the pressure washer. Uh, the next thing I'll have to do is it's gonna be warmer and it's gonna be more daylight, so I'm gonna have to work in smaller sections. I recommend that you do that too. Uh, you saw I went all the way across the whole car and then I started with the, with the roof and the back and the hood and I worked down to the, the side windows and then I worked down to the side body panels, and then I went lower to uh, the, the, the the skirt areas where uh, you'll have all the dust and debris kick up from the tires and the wheels. And then finally, I did the wheels, well, right before that I did the bumpers front and back and then underneath. Uh, and then I finally I went down and, and, and scrubbed out the wheels and the tires. You want to use a good brush on the tires. If you're into 
a wet look, you want to use more of a, um, not an oil-based tire shine because that will fling up oil on your car. More of a light silicone uh, should do the trick. They also have some environmentally friendly products that I will be looking into next time because I also like the, the look of a, of a good wet tire. Uh, another thing you want to check and make sure before you even get started at all is make sure that it's not illegal to or prohibited or against the HOA rules where you are to wash your car in your driveway. And if it is okay, you want the next thing you want to do is make sure that you don't have open storm drains that lead into the watershed. Uh, if you do, you need to use eco-friendly uh, eco -friendly materials that are biodegraded and certified uh, water watershed friendly, or you need to have some sort of method to uh, collect that water. Good luck with that. Um, one thing I may make a video on is some of the, the waterless car washes. Uh, the wrap that my car has actually came with some, some waterless car wash and we'll look and see what that does. So the next thing I want you to do is everybody washes their car differently and I know some of you uh, detailing experts out there are going to tell me everything I did wrong. So I'd like you to leave that information down in the comments below. Say, hey, you, you did this wrong, you did that wrong including stuff I didn't even already acknowledge. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, when you subscribe, I'd like you to ring that bell. That really helps the channel out. We're just getting started and we could use all the help we can get. And we hope to see you next time. Catch you on the flip side. Okay, we've now gone from 80 to 50 degrees. And we can see, except for the fossils, we can see that I did a decent job on the car. Not the greatest. Ooh, a little chip in the uh, paint protection film there. That's why it's important. That would've been a nasty chip in the car. And then uh, the Tesla brakes, they rust. So we'll have to do a couple stops to clean that up. Sorry about the wind. It wasn't blowing when I started this. All in all, it's a pretty good clean. Could be better. Could be worse.